Alright tankers, it's Man, and welcome back to the channel. So one of the best tanks in the game, tier for tier, is back in the premium store. Yes, it's also a premium, as well as being one of the best tanks in the game. But that's my opinion, some of you may disagree. Anyway, so how much is it going to cost you? Well I'm afraid the Cromwell Knight is going to cost you a lot of money. Um, it's in the bundle, and the cheapest bundle is 13 grand. 13,000 gold. As you see here though, the Freedom is not bundled, so whether they will release the Knight for a limited period without the bundle, um, they may do. So is it worth buying the bundle? Well, that is up for you to decide I'm afraid. All I'm going to tell you about is how I set up my Cromwell Knight, um, how I play the Cromwell Knight, and I'm going to show you some gameplay and show you how those things meet up. Um, the, how this tank becomes one of the most powerful tanks in the game. So here it is then, Cromwell Knight, pretty cool paint job, British flag, looking cool. Um, did a video when it first came back out, uh, it's, it's basically just a Cromwell. The guns look different. The, the gun on the regular Cromwell is a lot longer, which would normally mean accuracy and penetration. However, because it's World of Tanks, this short ass gun does exactly the same as a regular Cromwell. And it's an okay little gun. Fighting higher tier tanks from the front, even with your premium pen, can be a little troublesome. But that's not how you play this tank. Right. So, uh, first thing, my crew. I use my Death Star crew in this tank. And I heavily suggest you do as well, if you have one set up like I do. As you can see, I've got the normal things. Brothers in Arms, Snapshot, Sixth Sense, um, View Range Skills, Repairs. But also I've got all three um, sneaky skills. And I'm also training off-road driving which will also help the Cromwell. And what these view range skills combined with some equipment and a premium consumable. These allow you to get wicked view range without the need of binocular telescopes. And that means um, you have your view range all of the time and you don't have to stop and wait for those things to deploy. So as well as having wicked view range. Um, good accuracy with a snapshot. You're also very stealthy and able to fire and maintain your stealthiness even without the use of cover. I'm going to show you that in some gameplay. Right, so we talked about that. Um, if you don't have a crew like that, I would recommend your 4202 crew. Hopefully you've got camo on that and some other medium type skills. Right, so supplies. Heavily recommend on this tank, tea and pudding combined with coated optics rather than um, the binos. I don't have my equipment fit anymore, but we're just going to talk about what I would tell you to fit. Definitely coated optics, medium calibre tank rammer, and for ventilation. Some people may tell you to use a gun lane drive. However, I go for ventilation with coated optics, with brothers in arms, tea and pudding, um, situation awareness and all that stuff. And your view range without binos is way up there. Masses of view range. And also, medium calibre gun rammer with ventilation improves your DPM combined with again the premium consumable and brothers in arms so you have wicked DPM wicked view range on a wickedly fast maneuverable tank and now I think you can see where all this is going to lead to yeah um, so there we go that's how I recommend you set up your Cromwell Knight and now we're going to go into some gameplay and I'll show you exactly how all these things marry up and this becomes one of the best tanks in the game. Right tankers, so here we go then. Cromwell Knight, tier 7 game on Prokhorovka. So I immediately can see the speed of this tank. It is awesome. It goes everywhere really quickly. I'm on most ground types, um, even soft ground. The track traverse is not too bad at all. You can get to your top speed and maintain it. So that's why I'm now at Light Tank. Check me out. Get some sports um, for the first few minutes of this game and to the end of the game for some of our tanks. They're all going to be in completely stupid positions and um, I'm pretty much doing this for no reason at the minute. Although, um, Panzer 54, enemy's team, he pushes up. I'm not getting any assist points for this. But he sees a nice Cromwell to kill, and he gets a bit brave. And that's quite a dangerous tier 5 premium, premium medium tank out of the game already. There's an M6, fire on the move, and it hits. There we go, three quick assist points. 
This is just like a light tank. Check this out. They're getting creamed. Admittedly, a lot of our team are in the usual camping spots, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, if the enemy's team just keep coming over the top, I'm just going to keep adding up assist points. What you don't want to do is stay still like that, get hit by artillery, tracked and killed, because that's not how the game works. Right, so there we go, getting some deeper spots. The enemy's team. Um, a tank moving at this speed across their arc. They're going to have to go some and be pretty damn good with their gunnery skills to hit me doing this sort of speed. Um, that was very lucky. I almost ruined it then by hitting that rock. This, there's a lot of tier 7 tanks on the enemy team, and if I hit that rock and stop dead, um, most people can hit a tank that's not moving. So here we go, right. So now, whatever had the view range to spot me before, has moved. Keeping those guys lit up, hopefully artillery can get me some more assist points. And I'll just keep doing the same thing. Right, so now there's an IS-2 up on the hill. Most of our guys are right at the back. They're going to be fighting him frontally. So I come up to this nice little spot here, wait for him to get spotted again. There he is, he's behind a wreck. But he moves. Fire that one, it does pen, but I switch straight to my premium rounds. That is an IS-2. I'd like to use the pen, that one pens. Fire one blind, it misses. So I give up, don't waste any more rounds. Hopefully I'll swap back to my standard rounds now, or do I expect him to get spotted again? Yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. Anyway. Jagdpanzer IV pushes up. Don't want nothing to do with him, got much better targets over to this side. Alright, so there we go. Been a light tank long enough, I'm now going to be a tank destroyer. Check this out. With the APCR rounds, T29 at range is penable fairly easily. I could probably get away with um, standard rounds for his hull, but now he's pulled back a little bit. I'm still penning the side of his turret, which I definitely wouldn't have done with the standard rounds. Anyway, so a few quick shots. T29's almost out of the game. And then we spot a nice little tasty KV-1. So I'm on my standard rounds now. First one pens. Don't know what happened to that one. He's had enough. Don't know what happened to that one either. He's running away, so that's the end of that. Right, now well, these aren't my spots, they're way too far away. But check the rate of fire out. With some good gunnery skills, damage is easy to pick up. Right, you can see just from the team list at the top how much destruction we've managed to cause in such a few minutes. Plenty of assist rivers. Right now, watch this. That is my spot. I'm not getting spotted in return. You can see I'm getting assist points as well. Leading my targets, lovely. Standard rounds, side of a panther, not a problem. Just needs one more, come on, aim it up nice. Lovely panther down, and that's what I mean about the crew skills, fellas. I was staying stationary as well, so my camo value was a little higher, but with the crew skills I picked as well, you can see how close that challenger had to get before I got spotted there. So I decide now's the time to use my speed and mobility. He's gonna get hit. There we go, if I come in, finish him off, clean up the quick kill. Artillery's been spotted. The team are just a little too good. This game's not going on very long. That is the difference one tier 6 medium tank can make in a heavily tier 7 game. Right, so we'll push over here. The guys at the left, I was expecting to be in the corner, but now they've changed the map. It's slightly less, um, slightly less camped over there now, so they're not actually there. Well, that one goes down. Now it's only an M4. There he is. Right, so I stop straight away. If I keep driving at this guy, he'll be dead by the time I get there. Get scoped in. Get a bounce. This is what I mean about the uh, standard rounds on this one. Uh, ranges like this, even tier 5 mediums, can be a problem. Get one in. Come on, gunnery skills. Oh, we just missed the kill there, but hey ho. Plenty of damage done. Few kills. Lots of assist ribbons. Right, so there we go guys, that is how to use your Cromwell Knight in the most effective way. It can be a light tank, it can be a tank destroyer, it can be a medium, it's not, it's not, it can't really be a heavy tank, but it can do most of the other jobs pretty well. Right, so not much silver, I did fire some APCR rounds, high calibre, mastery one. 
Um, Confederate and a Scout medal for 10 spots, 2,500 damage and just under 2,000 assist points in a few minutes. And that's what the Cromwell Knight is all about. Well, so there we go, fellas. Cromwell Knight, if you don't have it already, I can't say whether the bundle is good value if you only want this tank. But if it does become available as a single tank, most definitely something you should purchase. Well, there we go, fellas. Hope this advice helps. Give the video a like if you did, and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.